want you to take after this event. If there's any time left, still go around if you didn't get a chance to look in the archives and you know ask any questions that you may ask. Um, for the artists that are here today, welcome again. Thank you for spending your time to come and do this panel so that people can get to know a little bit more about you and the artists behind each piece. Now, whenever I start a, you know, a panel, I start a get to know you session. So just tell us a little bit about yourselves, where you're from, and give us a little bit of insight in when you started um, doing your art and what led you to be become an artist. Hello, everybody. Hello. Uh, my name's Chris, Chris Mendez. I've been making art from what I can remember pretty much my whole life. It's been, uh, it's always been therapeutic. And uh, my first inspiration with art started pretty much in Panama. Uh, I would catch the, turn, I would catch the, the bus, uh, public transportation, which was a, uh, they had these colorful buses just filled up with graffiti and they had music in them and everything and they were called Los Diablos Rojos. And that was like my first introduction into, into art. And I was, I, my uncle used to paint paint those buses and I remember just smelling the paint and telling myself, you know, I, I would sometimes just be close by just because of the paint, you know. And that was something that I'll never forget the smell and I think that was my, my reason for why I wanted to paint and be around it, and um, definitely got a buzz off it, but, <laughs> but it, was, it, was, it, was, it was nice to see, to see it transform, you know, and then just being on those buses and, and then the art as well, um, in the streets, graffiti and all that was something that uh, influenced me and gave me uh, a spark, you know, to keep making art and, and always want to be around it, and yeah, but thank you. Uh, oil pastel 
and for me it has been since I was a child, it was more pastel, and so I did my first painting, and from that day I folded and it was, that's the feel like, this is how it is, so professionally I would say from 2008. Okay, again. Um, I don't know that I would consider myself a professional artist in the sense, kind of like, um, for example, um, Food Network chefs, a lot of them will say, well, I'm not really a chef because I didn't go to culinary school. Um, I didn't go to art school. I never took art classes. I always took um, foreign languages in school as my electives. Um, but somehow I became an art teacher. So I kind of skipped that step. Um, I was an art teacher for a few years and um, then I stopped being a teacher. Um, but I've always painted, so I don't fully consider myself a professional artist. It's more, it's just plain and simple. It's who I am. I'm an artist. So when did you start selling your um, I started selling my painting, I don't even remember the first one until many years ago, probably my early 20s. Um, and I've always had you know, my website and I sell when I can and I've always had a day job as well because it's hard to um, support yourself as an artist. Um, you need a lot of help and a lot of good fans along the way to help you. Um, but again, it's, it's part of who I am. Plain and simple, that's how I see it. Um, I don't know that I'll, always, I'll ever take myself that seriously where I consider myself a professional artist, but it's, it is my dream and it's my passion and what I've always done and what I hope to never stop doing. Because like my um, fellow um, colleagues here have said, it is a therapy. Um, when you have a passion like that, if you don't um, kind of build on it or use it or do it, it you, you become like so frustrated. You know, when I go a long time without painting, I become moody, I get you know, frustrated, I get cranky, um, because it's just something that you need to work on and need to do. You need to express it somehow, whether, you know, paint, whatever your medium is. For some people, it might be cooking, for others, it might be, you know, a sport or something. But when you have that passion, you just have to work on it and let it come out. So that's why I say that. Thank you, Chris. I agree. For me, it started, uh, I could go far as back, maybe as kindergarten. Uh, I sold my first piece of art. I would, kindergarten? Yeah, I would write people's names in graffiti and bubble letters, and people would trade me for cookies of 50 cents or a dollar, and I kept doing it to the point where I would save my money, and my mother always noticed, oh, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're making something out of it, you know? So my, my father was an insurance agent, so I always saw him, you know, kind of thrive and work on his own, you know, on his own timing, and that's something that I kind of piece together, like, you have to work and figure something out, so, um, having that um, as a foundation, my father watching thrive and work on his own, made me kind of just flip it over the part, and I've been painting in my whole life, so right after kindergarten, I started kind of kicking off with that, all the way to more or less the fifth grade, sixth grade, I kept doing it, I would write on book, draw on book bags and whatnot, and I was making $20, $25, purple bag, 10 bucks more or less. And then high school came around, and I was pretty much never in school because I was always uh, designing on shirts and jeans and sneakers, and then I'll get the most popular kids, and I'll figure out release dates for Jordans. I was a sneakerhead, Nikes and whatnot, and stuff that was coming out. And then I'll start um, kind of, you know, giving it to them, you know, you know, as bait, you know, I'll send some give them free gear, and then I'll have them get wear it, and then before you know it, I have a line of kids, you know, asking for stuff and whatnot. And it, it, it took off from there for me, you know, and then I had a, 2013 came around, and I kind of stopped for a little while. 2006, I took kind of like a break, I wasn't really making art. I started selling insurance, I had a, I had a beautiful child, and I had to provide, so I didn't think art was something that could work for me at the time. So 2013 came around, Wakewood was kind of like buzzing in Miami. And um, I just started walking into the galleries and doing homework and seeing what, what, what some of these pieces were going for. And then I started just um, making art. I didn't really know how to go, what direction to go, but I just know I had to, like you said, get it out of your system. Because if not, it gets frustrating. You know, if you just have so much work or, or, or you just have to get it out. You know, if you have these visions and these downloads, it has to, it has to be expressed in some way, you know, 
for the cooking, music, painting. For me, it was painting. So from there, um, I just started creating work and I ran into some people that knew some people and then I just ended up in galleries and whatnot and then I just started taking it a notch bigger. I wanted to work on work bigger projects. So I started working murals and so I've been just dabbling. You know, I've been traveling. I've been in Pennsylvania, in New York. Um, I've been traveling because of this gift. Thank God. I'm grateful. And uh, I'm still designing clothes. I'm, you know, and I just know that it's some, now at this point, I'm at a point where it's, it started off as therapy, but it's, it's kind of like a responsibility now, you know, for the people that love what you do and, and want to keep seeing you evolve and keep working, you know. So I'm, I'm there right now. Great. Okay, thank you. Um, so we're gonna start with you first. We're now going to go and ask each of you about your your art. Um, you started with wearable art, what I would call wearable art, and then you you transitioned into art on you know different medium canvas. Tell us a bit about your art. This is his, these are his pieces over on this side. Well, um, I'm usually always, uh, when I make art, I usually like to create anything that has inspired me or made me, you know, either smile or made me sad in any way, you know, I, I like to express it on the canvas. Uh, but the idea of canvas is actually started with my brother. He's, uh, he's a tattoo artist and then he told me to, when he saw it when I was making the shirts, he said, you should transfer this over to, to canvas, you know, you, you, I feel like it could you could do something else with it as well. And I started, I followed this lead, I started doing that. So um, that's when I started creating pieces, you know, more for the culture, more than anything, you know. Like I said, I was inspired by graffiti and obviously the Picassos and the Dalis and all those other guys that came here before us. And um, the Ron English, the Peter Sauls, all those guys, they kind of influenced me to make art. And from there, I just started painting on canvases, and this is these these pieces here represent me, who I am. I'm Panamanian. Um, growing up, I would always uh, see. I uh, grew up in Panama until I was 15, more or less. So back and forth between the states and Panama, I was uh, traveling. Uh, so I would when I would go to school over there, I would see these uh, natives of our country called the Indian Gunas. I would just see them wandering around the streets sometimes, you know, and I would always, some of them were small, some of them were tall, you know, but they had like this aura around them that I knew they weren't from where I was from, you know, they were from, we're in the same land, but they came from another place. And um, I just always wondered about them. As I grew older, I started, uh, I would ask my grandma questions about them, and and as I grew older, I just did homework on them, you know, and I realized they're indigenous people and they are, the way they carry themselves and believe is different from, from us. They, they still haven't been touched by society, by the norms of society. They still live to their terms, how they did from the beginning of time, you know. So that's why they live in the forest and they govern, they have their own government and they, uh, they live off their, their land. And yeah, that's something that I have always uh, wanted to go back to and know more about. So I created these pieces of work in, in honor, honoring them in my country. And uh, back in 88, there was an invasion that took place. Um, that, would, that would go over to the second piece. <coughs> that, that's pretty much my story, my history, how I made it to the States. Uh, I was born in Panama. My, my mother was a, a high-ranked lawyer in Panama. And my father was a, an agent as well, an insurance agent. But when the war broke out, um, pretty much everybody thought it was the end of the world over there. So uh, we had to migrate to, to the States. And my father had an idea, let's come to Miami. And that's what we did. Um, we came over here. Um, there, was a, there was a law back then that if you had a baby, uh, if you had a child on American soil, you would, you would uh, get, immigrants could easily get their papers, you know, so. My, my, they had my brother because of that reason. And therefore, he's called the Anchor Baby. And that's the name of that piece, the Anchor Baby. So if you see it, it resembles my family on a paper boat, which would 
my father always um, preferred his success and his life as a thriving on a paper boat, you know, in life. You know, if they, if they both the seat of the bed, you know, that's what he would resemble himself as, his little boat. And that's kind of why I did that. Um, yeah, and the rest is just, the second piece, the third piece is actually a, a piece that, was, that my mother, um, she, um, she was a lawyer, and I guess there was a client that couldn't pay for her, ser for her services, and she pretty much bartered her the pain for it. So it's been carried around, you know. That was the, uh, like, are, are the Mona Lisa or the Jesus piece in my house that I would always look up to and be like, wow, what is this, you know? And yeah. Okay, thank you. And I actually was going to ask about that second question. You see, I have it in my phone, ready yes. to put it, put it up? Because I, I noticed that it was different from the others in in the collection, in that the others were, to me, really showed um, indigenous, as you said, but I couldn't figure out what that second one meant, so thank you for explaining that. Okay. Um, okay, so Vivian, tell me a little bit about your your art and what it represents? Um, my art, for the most part, not 100%, but mostly, um, is very women-centric. So you always see women. Um, I was raised by women in a family that was, the women were the ones that kind of pushed forward and got the job done. So that comes out and I get emotional talking about it because, um, and I hate that I get emotional, but I always do. Um, were it not for the ladies, which are here, I wouldn't be here. Um, so, okay, what do you think? So, um, I'm very much a, you know, woman-centric lady. I'm very about female empowerment. Um, so that, that comes through in my work. Um, I, when I decided that I wanted to be an artist, that I really it kind of clicked in my mind was on a trip uh, that I went on to Mexico um, that my aunt took me on. I was uh, 15, so that was my quinceañera, was a trip to Mexico, and that's when I looked around in um, Mexico City, which is one of my favorite places in the world, and I just saw all those colors and all of that art. I mean, there's not one inch of that city where you look around and you don't see art. I mean, the artisans are everywhere. It's just so beautiful. And that's why it kind of like clicked. I'm like, oh, okay, it's not just, you know, coloring and drawing and all of this that I want to do. I actually, this is what, this is part of me. Um, and that's why I, I think that um, my art is so colorful. Um, again, I was raised in Miami, which is a melting pot. It's very colorful, it's very tropical. Um, so that's what I see that on a daily basis and it comes out in my work. Um, a lot of the times, um, our lives are, you know, pushing through, working, you know, the child of immigrants, I mean, everybody I think here can relate with that, you know, it's all about work and trying to get ahead, and life can become very black and white, and a lot of gray, um, and those colors to me represent what we're pushing for, having a life that is colorful, it's beautiful, um, it's enriched, and that's why my work is so colorful, I really try to push that through, so that you see it and it just brings a little bit of like happiness and a little bit of that fantasy that we all I think strive for, it comes out in my work. I did notice that and I said what got me about your paintings is that they are all so bright and colorful. Even the two at the end that I think represents night, it, it still looks bright, you know. So I was going to ask you about that. And the next thing that I noticed is with all the women except for for the one that has a green background all of them look like they're closing one eye <laughs> is there any significance to that um everybody always asks me and i don't have a definitive answer that kind of became my trademark um the first time that i did that was a portrait that i did of my sister and i and in in that not here um but in that portrait one one of us had our eyes closed and the other one had her eyes open and the significance in that painting was um, that sometimes to see things, quote unquote see, you need to close your eyes and feel. And 
the other one had her eyes open because she was leaning on the one that was me. So that was the significance there. And um, I don't know why, again, I'm getting all choked <laughs> up. Um, and that sort of became my trademark because it was the same. Sometimes you got to take a step back and just feel something in order for it to come through and for you to understand what it is the universe is trying to tell you. And that became my trademark, I think, and that. Um, that's where I'm, it was not something that was done intentionally. It kind of became, kind of morphed into that as time progressed. But everybody always asks me that question. Every time I have a show, someone will stop me and say, what's the significance of the wink? It's not actually a wink. It, it, I thought it was a wink. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, that's, I think that's my most commonly asked question. And I always think, okay, I need to come up with a better answer. <laughs> no, um, but, the answer, but, but the that answer. is the truth behind it. And then the threes. I noticed that there, there's threes in everything. Is that also significant? That is significant. Okay. Um, growing up, it was my mom, my sister, and I. So it was always the three of us. And we were kind of like a little cunito we say in Spanish. You know, we're always together, like a little um, this. Um, our family grew after that, but my earliest memories was of the three. And therefore the three. Okay. Thank you very a much. A lot of the times there's two, and that's my sister and I as well. That influence for Vera. Not necessarily portraits, but that's that inspiration. Thank you very much. Swami, tell us a little bit about your work. Um, my work, everything is with oil pastel, um, crayon. Um, it's a work of layers. Um, I use crayolas and I put it in oil and I create this color of the color. Um, so as myself, I consider a person, a complex person, I have a lot of layers, and that's how I put it on my work. Um, as you see, it, it's, uh, it's a portrait of myself in every painting, because I want it to be not the center, it's, not, it's more like expressing my feelings, but being in there, because uh, I, I am the main character of my life, so I just wanted to be in there. And everything is around it, it's what moved me, like my kids, uh, my, the feelings that I have at the moment. Um, my trademark is that is the oil pastel and the use of those iconic sweats. Uh, the significance of that is like our life, it's, it's complex, even inside our body, we don't know what is inside our body, and we. It's moving, every cell, every organ, it's moving, and we don't know, but we feel it. And that's what I wanted to portray there. Um, I don't know, I love the gradation, I love this, the use of color in you know, in many ways, and, and, and I love to go from one color to another one in, in a very soft way that, you know, it's made before. Um, Everything is on paper. I stretch the paper. As soon as I get, I touch the paper. Uh, it, my work is spontaneous. So I don't have an idea. I don't, you know, draw before that. It just came out as the times. I take the paper, I stretch it with gesso, and then I let the process go. You know, we call it pastel. And that's what I can say. I, it's all me is there. Yeah, I mean, it's. I don't know. I I feel sometimes I start a painting and I you know my husband is here and he can tell uh, and I don't touch it for like months and then suddenly I have to I have to come back because it's something in me that I have to finish that painting and again I have to try it work on it try it again it's a process it's a layer of a layer um, feeling is done and I don't know when it's done I just feel it it's done. It's a very spontaneous process. Uh, it, and, and, and it's, it's, some, it's something um, intimate for me. It's uh, something private for myself. My husband sometimes tells me, you, do you want to be recorded when you paint? And I say, no, I, my mom. It's, it's my mom. It, it's me in there. And that's why I don't have YouTube uh, channels or me painting or like TikTok, you know, doing you know, when why it's just me. The last result is that, that's what you're gonna get. And I don't do uh, prints or prints, that's original and it 
because the feeling at the moment, I'm sorry, I can't remember. The feeling of what I as I had at the moment that I paint is unique. Is unique. So I wanted to keep it that way while painting no prints, and that's me. Um, thank you. I'm very thankful for. I'm sorry. I'm thankful. I'm very thankful for all the my family, all my friends, and the opportunity for Kali to, you know, to open to all of us. And uh, it's almost. Uh, I would say this is my first exhibition after many, many years. Pregnancy, kids, house. You know how it is. And the support of my family, and the support of my friends, and. Anna is not here. Um, it's on um, 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 so I'm very thankful for this opportunity. I find it uh, no, stick with you. I find it interesting that you say you don't plan, you don't plan beforehand what you're gonna do. One thing that I see in all your paintings, I said, I, I thought to myself, this artist must have planned it. Every single painting has circles circles in there and I said, okay, there's something about this artist in circles. What is it? Uh, the circle is the most perfect uh, shape. You know, it's, it's infinity. You, it's, it's like infinity for me, you know, so it rounds everything. It goes from bad to good to bad to good. It's like, it's a circle for me. So it shows that I am, I always in a change. I always like in a constant change and I'm circling. My life is always circling, you know, so always the same. And um, yeah, and I also I believe in the in, in, in that energy that we don't see and you know, you know like uh, third dimensions, uh, the things that we don't the, you know, we feel only, you know. And those spots, the black spots, is like. It's like it's the pain in one dimension, and then you can reach something behind that you don't know. But that's the illusion that I want to get because that's how I feel. Sometimes I'm painting and I feel like someone is behind me, like, okay, that's what you have to do. I'm a bad drawer. I'm a bad drawer. I, I, yes, very, yeah. I don't know how to draw. I, you know, when I got the idea of my painting, I put a little paper and I'm just drawing and I say, my, even my son say, what is that, your painting? Well, it's gonna like the idea. I'm very bad drawing. But when I stretch the paper, I put the gesso and I put it on my pin in, and I save that and I start creating, I'm completely different person. And that's what I say, I mean, it is therapy for me. And the use of Crayola, I, I use Crayola, Crayola, a little more sophisticated, like um, uh, uh, oil pastel, but it's not use. I use it and I smash it. I use my hands, pencil, anything that I can. You know, sometimes a fork, you know, to paint texture. To paint the texture. If you go close to it, you will see uh, it's not. It's it's not straight. You have, you do see texture on the painting. And um, yeah, <laughs> maybe the Crayola that kids play with. Yeah, with it. that's my choice. Okay. Crayola. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that's a brand, but that, yeah, like but the oil. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Vivian, I have one more question for you before I turn it over to the audience. Uh, you said that you were never the girl that really played with dolls, mm -hmm. and um, you would rather a coloring book and crayons. And I find that interesting because for somebody who never played with dolls, most little girls, they play with dolls and all of that. And your artwork is so female-centric with, with um, you know, parent, children, you know, your sister, as you say. So I just found that a little bit interesting, you know, because as I said, a lot of little girls play with, that's what they want, dolls. Okay, so. It's just something I never found interesting. Um, I remember my father always says that this is a, a memory that I created that it's not real, but I remember having a, it was like a stuffed animal of sorts above my crib that was a clown and I hated it. I used to sit, sit up at night and look at it and again, he says I created that in my mind. I don't know if it's true or not, but I just, I never found, you know, 
the allure in dolls and toys in general. Um, I just prefer creating, you know, doing. I remember like during the summers, um, uh, growing up, I always had some kind of like little craft going on where I was creating something. You know, when scrunchies were in in you know, the eighties, I used to I learned with my grandmother how to make them, and I would make them. I learned to embroider and sew and things like that. I found that more interesting, creating something rather than playing with with a toy. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, you know. For my niece and nephew, I buy them toys and dolls and such, but I just personally never found it interesting. All right, now thank you for for your insights into your art. It's something that you know. I'm, I'm glad that it's it's on display here, so people can get to know more about you and. They came here to learn more about you. So I'm now turning it over to the audience. Do you have any questions for any of these artists? Correct. Um, the Mola art was uh, something I had, my father pretty much had uh, all over the house. This is actually a piece from one of the Molas as well, compact. Uh, he purchased it many years ago. Uh, I've had a piece with the sense of myself. So, yeah, that's the Rojo's yeah, and the Molas is definitely uh, my first outlook for the first time I ever saw art. Thank you, Chris. Anybody else have any other questions? Questions for you all. What next? You've done this exhibition. What's, what are you working on now, or what do you have planned coming up after this? Um, I'm always working on murals more than anything. I, I like to expand my work in the sense of uh, when I'm not in the studio, I like to be outside and work on big projects. Like anything I think well, I can get my hands on, you know, whether it's something I could get paid for, or, or, a, or a situation where I could just I see a neighborhood that needs the artwork. I'll go and I'll create, you know. And it's it's just uh, I have time myself as well, where I can create the work on a timely manner, where I'm not there all day. I mean, not not all day. I mean, all for a long time creating it. Because if it's up to me, I would be there for years on, on a mural, you know. But I, I just there's always as you get, there's always things of a day you have to do so. Um, but yeah, I'm always working. Like I just finished a couple projects. Um, working with uh, this, small workers, restaurants, barbershops, so that's pretty much kind of my sports when I'm not at uh, work, when I'm not in the studio. Working on the mirror, and clothing brand as well. That's the thing that I'm working on. So far. <laughs> Um, I'm always working on something. I always have some projects in the works. Um, I'm working on, uh, I mentioned earlier that I used to teach, I'm working on some private classes as well. Um, and I'm always experimenting with new mediums. Um, earlier today, I was working with red and I'm still speaking still. And I'm always just trying to learn something new. Um, even though I never took formal art classes, I'm always trying to learn and I look to other artists for inspiration. Um, you were talking about the pastels, that's the super curious, so now I'm going to play. And just learning different mediums and creating something new. So I always have a project. To be honest, I don't know. It's just, I'm very happy with the we are right now. And after, you know, many months, Every day I plan to paint. Um, 
what I'm working is to be more consistent for my keep going on the work and exploring the most I can the potential or pastel that the potential that I have in me that I think is not even out yet. So that's what I'm going to work on now. Um, more exhibitions, hopefully, like that. And from there, thank you for all. Thank you, everyone. I think the last question is for for future artists, painters, whatever medium. What would you tell them? What would you say to them as far as getting it, don't get in it? What advice would you give? Um, the first advice that I would give to somebody that would be for like uh, you know, just follow the uh, internal like create what is in your heart and don't follow and be documented by other people because this is what it sells, you know, you have to be abstract. This is what it sells, you have to be, be yourself and be consistent because when you work and you're consistent and you're there, it's you. People are going to notice it, that this is you. You know, you, you don't mind to try to be so And it doesn't matter. In the long run, they're going to see you as what you, you know, like you're putting in there. So don't try to be, don't try to copy all the others, just be for yourself. Just be yourself, put your heart in there, and just, and experiment. Like, you know, uh, I mean, I'm very bad with my advice in that because I'm still with the pastel, even if I know anything else, but that's my part. Uh, but yes, try new materials, new things, you know, and but keep it your, keep your spirit there. That's my only advice. All right, thank you. Um, for me, the advice would be you love it, so no matter what anybody says, no matter what you sell or not, put your passion into it, all of that comes. It might take a little while, but it will come through. And you just you have to do it. That's what you feel, you have to do that's a good thing we have. You have to see it on the channel. Yes. Uh, consistency. Uh, just be consistent. True, be true to yourself. And it doesn't even matter what anybody thinks or even says. Just go out there and express yourself the best way you know how with whatever it is that you're doing. You want to go to school. Be a lawyer, you want to be a doctor, you want to paint, you want to cook, make music, anything. It doesn't just be creative as well. Have your own identity. That's a very important your own identity, your own DNA. And because we're all unique. You just have to tap into to that to that calling. And then when you get those downloads, just follow, follow through. You know. Just have fun. Just have fun being where you're doing everything. That's the main thing, having fun and being grateful, gratitude. You missed the best before. Okay, and my last question to everybody. How do people get in touch with you? They want to commission you to do your um, uh, I could be reached at, I have an Instagram, uh, 79. S T Flea Market Friend, 79th Street Flea Market Friend. It's kind of long, but that's my way of uh, communicating to the world of not um just talks. You know, if you see me outside or, or uh, working on any project or anything like that, or you know, just, I usually ask somebody I like to uh, make myself available in person. Other than anything. I have an online presence, but I'm still uh, working on that development, you know, but um, I find myself more uh, walking into the room and speaking to people when, when it's needed, you know, in that way. But yeah, I could be found via Instagram. Okay, thank you. Oh, Frank without the N, without the A. It's kind of complicated. Mm -hmm. Frank. F-R-N-K? F-R-N-K. Okay. Seventy nine S T F R N K. Seven nine S T Flea Market. Flea Market. Right. Yeah, there used to be a flea market in um, the USA flea market um, in Hialeah or Opalaka, or Hialeah to be exact. 
And I used to airbrush out of it. That was like my first kind of my first job where I started figuring out, okay, this is um this is official. You know, it ain't just therapy. You know, or it's just not um, my friends are supporting it or high school kids, you know, is I can make something out of this. And then from there I just kept going, made my way up here now. Yeah. So 79th Street for you Mark Frank. Um my uh, my online presence is something I'm working on as well. I feel like my colleagues are to keep up. It's a necessary evil nowadays, but it's really difficult to work on. Um, but um, my website is drdebunamayani.com and um, across all social media, Dr. Um, Um Yeah, I'm through my website. It's easy. www.swans.com Send a message if you have anything there, you can all my social issues, Instagram and Twitter are there. Continue because I'm not that social. Uh, <laughs> I'm not being too social. Um, but it's there. Okay, well, if nobody has any further questions for these artists, again. Thank you for joining us today, spending your time today to allow people to get to know more about you and your art. Everybody, if you have any questions you didn't want to ask, you can always go up to them individually. If you have any time left, you can, and you didn't see the archives yet, you can go around and see the archives. Thank you again for being here, Khalib. Thank you for allowing me to be a moderator of this panel. <laughs> I appreciate it. And with that, everybody, thank you. And the exhibit will be up until.